Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 television consumers. You will be very much interested in these latest products of the scientific mind. They will be placed on street corners, drug stores, hotel lobbies, etc. These are not telephone booths, television booths. No matter where you are, you can slip into one of these and by depositing a dime can view three minutes of this wondrous art form. How often have you had to go to the corner drugstore on an errand and then never learned how a play ended? Now you need no longer be chained to your home set. In one city where the television booth was introduced, a gentleman ventured from his home for the first time since 1947. His wife reports that he walked out of the house with $50 worth of dimes and has not been seen since. Because so many people are used to seeing television from a horizontal position, either slumped down, feet on the coffee table, or while lying in bed, every other booth is constructed with a TV screen in the floor, so you can look at the picture through your feet. But we must begin our show. If you have paid a dime, and one of your three minutes turns out to be this next one, you have my sympathy but we shall keep the dime. Reverend George Locke. I wonder if I might speak to your husband. Well, I'm expecting him back any moment. Won't you come in? Thank you. Dear, that will be enough now, please. We have guests. Oh, won't you sit down, Reverend? Oh. This, uh, this isn't Anne, is it? No. This is our younger daughter, Barbara. Oh. Barbie, this is Reverend Locke. Pleased to meet you, Reverend. Delighted. Now, why don't you go upstairs and put your dress on, dear? Because Daddy's going to be home any minute. Come here. Yes, Mom. No, no. How stupid of me. Anne, Anne would be almost 14 by now, wouldn't she? Is that why you're here, Reverend? Is it about Anne? As a matter of fact, it is. Is there some problem? No, no. It's purely a personal matter, which, if you don't mind, I should prefer to discuss with your husband. Yes, of course. You see, I was chaplain at the Seabrook State Prison in the Smokies many years ago, and... I had occasion to know your adopted daughter's real father before that wretched man's unhappy death. Anne, you're late. You know the stores close early on Saturday, dear. I'm sorry. Your dress is on your bed. Oh, why can't I go like this? Anne. All right, Mother. I'll... Oh, don't shout. Your father has a visitor in his office. Who is it? No one you know. Go on. Hurry up. Well, what? What, my office? Your visitor is a Reverend Locke. Reverend? What did I do now? Reverend Locke? Oh, oh. Charming family, Ranger Mallory. Oh, thank Charming. you. Charming. I uh, cannot tell you how pleased I am both to meet you and to... Uh, find out that the daughter of that uh, 
unfortunate man is in such loving hands. Oh, excuse me. She's upstairs right now, and she's going out in a few minutes. I think my wife explained. Oh, it. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, uh, since the child remembers nothing of the past, I, uh, I can see how important it is to both of you that she continue to believe your your little fabrication that she was adopted by you at the age of three after the uh, peaceful and entirely normal demise of her mother and her father. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, it's remarkable that a child of such a tragedy should be so happy and uh, so normal. Why? Well, your wife did mention a few visits to a Dr. Holt. Well, that had to do with her schoolwork. Well, I guess my wife explained that, too. Yes, but a psychiatrist? Just because of some minor anxiety or a future scholarship? Or perhaps there was something more? Look, Reverend, this is a kind of a personal matter. Oh, is it mine, mine, mine? No. Anne is a perfectly normal child. She has a brilliant mind, very brilliant. She has a desire to excel in everything she does. Uh, but she, she blames herself if she's not 100% perfect in everything. Yes. Now, she demands too much of herself, but Dr. Holt says that, that these are symptoms of things that are essentially good. Your vehemence in her defense is very touching, Mr. Mallory. Still, it must be a source of great worry to you. The thought that this child might turn out to be like her father. Well, it's a stupid thing to say. Perhaps, but then, you see, I happen to know a good deal about psychiatry. It's uh, very useful in my work. And I'm sure Dr. Holt must have warned you of the extreme danger to a child, especially such an emotional child, if she were to learn the truth about her real parents and how they died. Look, Reverend, I, I, I don't like your, your, your manner for a clergyman, you... Ah, but then you see, I am not really a clergyman. Hmm. No, actually, I am a businessman. And I am here on a matter of business. What business? Blackmail. I don't know what stupid idea you've got in your head. I think the state police will know what to do with you. Please, don't make the mistake of thinking I am stupid, Mr. Mallory. Blackmail is my profession. You surely don't think I would have come here like this unless I'd taken some precautions first. I think perhaps I'd better introduce you to my associate before you do anything rash. Your associate. There is, as you know, a telephone booth in the picnic area at Lookout Point, which is visible from this window. I shall now dial that booth. When it rings, then my associate, Mr. Parker, will emerge from the booth, signal twice toward us, and then disappear into the forest. There. You see? You haven't the faintest idea what he looks like, or where to find him. And he has his instructions. Now, if anything should happen to me, then he will do very quietly and anonymously. He will do what I shall be forced to do, unless you and I can come to an understanding. Now, shall we have our little chat? What do you want? Six thousand dollars by Monday night. Six thousand? Oh, I realize you're a little shocked, but it's really not so terrible as all that. See, I happen to know that you have a savings account for the children. And any small difference in the amount can be made up with a bank loan, using this house as security. What can you do? You can either call the police, or you could... Kill me. But either way, you will utterly destroy your precious little Anne. Because there's always Mr. Parker. <laughs> He's an unhappy young man. He's almost vicious. I'm afraid he might take a certain pleasure in telling the child that her real father bludgeoned her mother to death in a drunken rage and then hanged himself. <laughs> I can hear him now. Little girl, your father was a murderer and a suicide. To maybe there's some of him in you. 
all her life, she'll wonder, am I insane like my real daddy was? Oh, shut up. Will I commit suicide like my real daddy? Shut up, shut up! Daddy? Can I come in? Yes, dear. What do you want? I'm sorry, Daddy. I, I thought... That... No, I'm still here, my dear. But I very much wanted to meet you. Now, this is Anne, isn't it? Yes. Your father and I have been having a little chat about uh, old times. I didn't mean to barge in, Daddy. But I'm, I'm looking for my tray of test tubes. You didn't see them around any. I haven't seen them any, no. Uh, Anne, we're late. Come on, baby, your mother's waiting. Hurry. The next time, when you're not in such a hurry, perhaps we can have a little talk about, uh, what well, about science? I hear you're a very brilliant student. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, Goodbye, Goodbye Reverend. Goodbye, my dear. Charming. She adores you, and you quite obviously adore her. You'd move heaven and earth to save her from pain. Surely $6,000 is a very small amount to pay for her future happiness. Surely. But it wouldn't stop there, would it? You'd beat us again year after year. No, no, no. That kind of blackmailer invariably winds up in prison. It's against my principles, Mr. Mallory. Once I receive the money, Mr. Parker and I will move on to fresher fields out of your life forever. I see. I take your word for that, huh? Unfortunately. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to take your word for anything, and I'm going to see she's protected from you and your associate forever. No. Don't be naive, Mr. Mallory. What about her, her school friends, her playmates, her neighbors? You know, it doesn't take very much. Just one or two anonymous telephone calls or letters. You know what gossips these small-town people are. How long do you think it'd be before the poor child knew the whole morbid story. Now, Monday night, 8 o'clock. You will walk slowly from this house to the picnic ground. You will wait there by the telephone booth. When it rings, a voice will tell you exactly where in the forest to meet me. Now, you'll have the money in 10 and $20 bills wrapped in brown paper. Now, no marked bills and no futile efforts to contact the police. I worked this out very carefully, Mr. Mallory. And if you deviate from my instructions in any way, I shall know it immediately. I won't be there. You'll be there. With the money. Good day, Mr. Mallory. <laughs> We're going to have Daddy let the chickens burn. Mother, if you'd let me fix a timer on the oven, it never would have happened. Miss Know-it-all. Where's my tray of test tubes, you little thief? Jim, you let the chickens burn. What happened? Did you fall asleep? No. Well, it went off. Did you even hear it? I'm oh, sorry, darling. <sighs> Guess this just isn't my day. Blunt, listen. Oh, well, I'll take some steaks out of the freezer. That'll solve it. Hey, hey, is something Mommy, wrong? Mommy, you tell me where they are. Mommy, Mommy, she twisted my arm. She hid my test tubes. And you, I told you not to touch her. If you think she's done something wrong to you, you're supposed to come to me or your father. You understand? Yes, Mother. Barbie, did you take her test tubes? She can't take a joke. What did you do with them, Barbie? They're in the freezer. The freezer? Oh, it's ruined now. The whole experiment is ruined. You dumb little... Anne, don't talk to your sister like that. Now, I want you to apologize to her. Right now. I'm sorry. My arm still hurts. Will you stop it, all of you? Please, just stop it. Now, you see, you've upset your father with your fighting. Now, I want you to apologize to each other. I'm sorry, Barbie. 
I'm sorry, Mother. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Oh. And baby. Barbie, go put some baked potatoes in the oven for Mommy, please. Yes, Mommy. Go to a gym. You're the only one she'll talk to when she gets like this. Right. Linda. Yes? I have to talk to you when we can. I'll... I'll tell you when dinner is ready. Hydrogen plus water react to yield sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. I looked at it for the first time just now, and I already know it. Just like that. Aren't you proud of me? I know all that, and I don't know anything. I don't know how to be good, or kind, or how to make people happy. I don't want to hurt Barbie ever. I love her and Mother, but... But something inside of me just... I don't know. And... And I made you angry too, Daddy. Yes, yes. No. Yes, this afternoon when you were talking to the Reverend. I didn't mean to. But I did. It just seems that nothing I do or... I don't know. It's just not simple, like... Like this. I love you, Daddy. I love you, too. And right now, I'm starving to death, too. Let's go help your mother, huh? Come on. thousand dollars. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Do you mean he actually sat there and, and said this to you? What did you do? I didn't do anything. It's the horrible part of it. It all seems so weird. He just sat there calm and smiling. Jim. Jim, you don't you don't really think he'd tell Ann, do you? I think he would. I'm sure. Did you call the police? How could I after what he tried to do to Ann? But, Jim, we have to. We can't cope with this ourselves. I've been hammering at this thing in my mind for hours. Of course, I want to go to the police, but we can't. They can help us. They can, they can tell us what to do. Jim, they handle hundreds of these blackmail cases every Not year. Not like this one. Jim, I know how you feel about Ann. What they might have happen? never handled anybody like Locke. He's thought of everything. Well, they can at least advise us. It, it can't do any harm, can it? Once we tell anybody about Ann, who knows where it'll end? Police gossip, a tip to the newspapers. But we wouldn't have to tell them about Ann's father. We could just say that... Well, some stranger named Locke is blackmailing us and, and leave it at that. Lynn, you can't just... I don't know, maybe you're right. Maybe that's all we can do. Not right now. Tomorrow in the morning, maybe. But Jimmy, he said Monday night. We don't have that much time. I know that. I've got to think. Look, Jim, don't take it out on me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're right about the police. I don't want to be right or wrong, Jim. I, I just want us to find some way out of this nightmare. Mm. Now, that's as close as I can come to Locke's appearance, but it, it's, he's got a long... Thin face. 
Well, I'm sorry to bore you with all this identification here, Team Jim. At least we know our man has no previous arrests for blackmail in this area. You have no idea what his accomplice Parker looks like. You know, there's a chance if we pick Lock up that Parker will give it up as a bad job and hightail it out of the state. Chance? Hank, I can't take any chances. Well, then we'll have to pick them both up together. Pretty kind of tough. This guy's smart. He's clever. Jim, money's involved. They'll have a rendezvous set up somewhere for tomorrow night or soon afterwards. Now, if you're willing to keep that appointment, give him a packet of counterfeit bills. I'm sure that we can zero in on Locke. Follow him until he joins Parker and pick them both up together. I'm sure I'm willing to do anything, but... but... Well, what if he suspects he's being followed? We're not exactly amateurs at this job. Oh, I know that, Hank, but have you ever tried to track anybody in a forest? We have quite an effective field communication system. Similar to your walkie-talkie, but less conspicuous. Our men will move into your forest area early in the afternoon as if they're one of your fire crews. They'll fade off into the brush one at a time and wait for night. When one of them spots lock, they radio the others. Each one will pick them up in turn. By radio without moving until he leaves the forest. Then we'll put a normal tail on him. Oh, it's awful complicated. It'd be so easy for something to go wrong. Now look, Jim, we've taken your story in faith. You won't even tell us why you're being blackmailed, and we've accepted that up until now. Now, the least you can do in return is let us handle our job our way. But how can you be sure? We can't be sure about anything. We'll do our best, that's all I can promise. Keep looking back toward the phone booth. Are you sure you didn't make a mistake in the time? Eight o'clock sharp, Hank. I couldn't forget that. Say 25 now. Any other outdoor phone booth in this area? No, a mile and a half from here, Lone Creek camping area. This is the one he meant. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Look how much are men. Maybe he could have spotted one of them. Take it easy, Jim. Give him a few more minutes. Hello. Mallory, you're a fool. Get rid of your state police friend. Go home, wait there. You'll hear from me. This is your last chance, Mr. Mallory. Wait a minute, what? He hung up. Jim, how did it go? Mommy, I want you. He didn't show. He saw her right through the police trap. Mommy! Oh, Barbie has an earache. I'll be right down, dear. Where's Ann? She's reading to Barbie. dollars won't be the end of it. There isn't any other way. Without even consulting me? I'm consulting you now. Oh, I'm so confused. You, you make me feel so guilty. I'm sorry. Oh, if there was just some other way. But Jim, why don't we tell her ourselves? No. But then it wouldn't matter what Locke did. And we destroy her. Can't you see that? Look, Jim, I love Anne, too, but we'll destroy us as a family if we pay that terrible man. 
Jim, why don't we try the police just once more and tell them about Anne's father? It will at least give them a lead on Parker and Locke. We've been all through that. We can protect her. How? Lock her in her room? She has to live, doesn't she? Go to school, see the other kids. You know how cruel children can be. I know, I know, Jim. Remember what Dr. Holt said? This is a particularly vulnerable time for her. Now, maybe if she was a little bit older, we could risk it, but not now. Stop hammering at me. Well, can't you understand what a thing like this would do to her? Why do you always put her first? Hello. Mallory, did you enjoy your little wait? You're very silent tonight. Is that because you finally learned the state police can't help you? All right. Tell me where and when to meet you with the money. You're late. Where's the package? The bank won't let me have the money until tomorrow. You're lying. I'm not lying. They just don't hand you $6,000. I've got to have more time. I want the money now. I'll have it for you in the morning. I'll pr I promise you now. That's the best I can do. Every extra second means more danger for me. I ought to tell that stupid, gawky little brat of yours just out of spite. That's you. No, 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 no. One more chance. I'll well, phone instructions. Now, Mallory, we got an agreement. Tomorrow morning, then I'll be out of your life forever. You say one word to her, I'll kill you. Yeah? I'll kill you! Jump for you, think somebody's fixing to kill you. Ah, oh, you're drinking again, you fool. I told you to stay at the motel. What if the police were to find out? You know something, boy? I don't give a soft yawn about no police. You're my man, and I ain't about to let you skip out of me now. Where is it? Can't get the money out of the bank till tomorrow morning. Boy, you ain't a very good liar. Now, where you hiding it? I'm not hiding it. All right, just for that. Old Odie's liable to keep all the money. I mean, after all, I'm the one who sicked you onto Mallory and that little Annie girl. You fool. I tell you, he didn't bring the money. You know something, boy? I'm getting mighty tired of you calling me that. Where is it, boy? Huh? Boy, where is it? I'm waiting, boy. I'm waiting! Huh? Boy, where is it? Our story will continue in a few moments. Just now, we must observe the quasi-folk ritual of the station break. Actually, the station break was designed for a very useful purpose. It keeps the two halves of a show from bumping into one another. I hate to break this to you, but the opinions expressed during the past two minutes do not represent those of our sponsor. We have yet to hear from him. However, following that, we shall have the second half of Night of the Owl. Jumpers, what are these 
Simmons up there. Bomb that crown fire south of the tower. Here comes Jim now. I'll get back to you. Over. Sam? Got to raise your deck below, you old smoke eater. The back fire's got a wick up north. How's it here? Well, we got a line hacked out southwest of the cliff. She ought to hold her. Air control's got the whole first slope. The wind shifts were in trouble. Now when we went down the south break, huh? I'm going back in with these fellows as soon as they get their breath. I'll be right with you. Well, this is where she started. There's the poor devil that started her. Burned himself up, most likely. Lord preserve us from careless people. Yeah. Jim, you know him? Yeah. Yeah, I know him. You must be dog tired, but with no sleep on, eh? Then I guess you fellas are used to it, this fire weather. Yeah. Have a tough time getting this one under control? No, not, not much. There's a bill. i read it first. Mind if we ask you a few more questions? Uh, Mallory was nice enough to come down here and give us a complete statement right away. I don't think we should keep him from his no, bed any longer. That's all right. I just talked to the coroner, Captain. You were right in assuming it was murder, Jim. Locke was strangled. The concussions, evidence of a struggle, all point to an act born of great anger. Must have been quite a shock to you and a relief when you saw that body. What makes you think that Parker killed Locke? Who else? Too bad you don't know more about him. I told you all I could. Eh? Not much to go on, is it? You say that you saw him on Saturday. You say that Locke talked about him. It seems to be about all we know about the man. So far, he's just a name, sort of will of the wisp. It might help if you told us now why you're being blackmailed. Hank, I told you I can't. I'm sorry. Jim, a man's been murdered. You're withholding relevant information. I think we've had enough for one night, Lieutenant. Now look, let, let's just get it over with now, huh? This 8 o'clock meeting you had, how long were you with Locke? A couple of minutes, that's all, no more. Where'd you go after leaving him? Straight home? No, I was... I was upset. I wanted to think. Where'd you go? Set up in the hill in the back of the house. And after that, I went inside and, uh, and the phone rang about the fire. What time was that? Well, you know what time that was. It was around nine. What were you so upset about? Look, what do you want me to say? I was upset because I killed Locke, huh? Did you kill him? Yes, in my mind. A hundred times, I wanted to, but I didn't. Are you trying to tell me this is what disturbs you? The thought that you might have been a murderer? That's all, Mallory. Sorry we cried your patience, you've been very cooperative. Still, after we've done a little looking around, we may want to talk to you again. Sinus. No, I don't. Annie. Annie. Oh. Betty, you all right? You had a nightmare. Why aren't you in school? I'm home already. You slept all day. Want me to rub your forehead with the witch hazel? No. You take care of me when I have a bad dream. Now I can take care of you. I'm fine now. You're worried. It has something to do with me, hasn't it? No, it doesn't have anything to do with you. 
Anne, did you wake your father up? I was awake already. Uh, darling, why don't you go finish your homework? I finished. Hello? Yes, but Daddy wants some privacy. Go on, dear. Oh, sorry. Who? It's O.D. Parker, boy, that's who. Now listen, boy, and listen good. I need a thousand quick. That's all it's gonna cost you now. One thousand green ones, and I'm gonna keep my big mouth shut, yeah? What do you want me to do? Put the money in an envelope. As soon as it gets dark, bring it around to the picnic ground. Big old trash can chained to a tree. You stash the cash under the trash, huh? And then get. All right. And no hijinks, boy. I'm picking it up in my own sweet time. If I smell a cop, that's it. I mean, your little Annie girl's gonna wish she'd never been born. Yeah? Yes. Parker? He's cut the price to a thousand. He wants it tonight. Oh. Well, all we'll have to do is tell the police and... and they'll set a trap for him. He's not that much of a fool. There's no telling when he can pick up the money. It might be days. Well, they... they can wait him out. They don't even think there is a Parker. I've got to prove him wrong. I look all right on thinking I killed Locke. I'll have to do it myself. I'll go it alone. I'll wait him out and bring him in. But, Jim, you can't. He's desperate. He's killed a man already. Oh, Jim, there must be some other way. There isn't any other way, man. Drop it. I'm pointing a 38 right at you. Now climb down here. Come on. Hey, what you gonna do if I don't come down, huh? You gonna shoot me out of this tree? Huh, huh. Might just call that murder, boy. Hey, I know. You gonna come up here after me, huh? Yeah. Just me and you, all by our own selves in this big, bad forest. You better get along home, Ranger Boy, for it's too late. All right, down. Make me, Ranger Boy. Just try and make me. Gonna be a long wait. Hey, how long you figure that flashlight's gonna hold out, huh? Daddy? You stay back, Johnny. Stay there. Don't move. Daddy, I, I tried to follow you, but I got lost. Don't move, you. 
Honey, you run home. Tell your mother to call the state police. Have her say I'm up here with Parker. You understand? Yes, Daddy. Candy girl, you make one little move. I'm going to kill your daddy. Don't believe him, honey. I'm pointing a gun right at him. Now run. She don't want to see her little old daddy laying dead on the ground, do you, Annie girl? Shut up. Go on, Annie. Don't you see she can't move far? She's too scared of what her old cousin Odie might do. That's right. I'm your second cousin. Twice removed, Annie girl. Daddy, what's he... Honey, will you get out of here, please? Yeah. I was just a little old teenager in the smokers when that terrible thing happened to your real pawn mom. Shut up, shut up, you will kill you. You ain't gonna kill me in front of her, boy. I mean, that poor old gal got enough to live down. Daddy, what's he talking about? I... Annie, I told you to get out of here. Now go on. Daddy. Your real papa killed your real mama. He killed her dead with a kindling axe. Then he hung yourself in prison. Daddy! Honey, stop. <laughs> Annie. Annie. <laughs> Jim, I couldn't get Lieutenant Ames, but I did speak to the sergeant. Jim, what happened? I killed him. I don't think I killed both of them now, Locke and Parker. Jim, what are we going to do? Nothing to do but wait. Where's Anne? She's upstairs. She knows, doesn't she? I tried to explain to her about the blackmail and those two awful men. She didn't even cry. And she finally told me about calling the state police. I bet I am. Will you go up to her? I can't talk to her now. Please. Jim, she needs you more now than she ever needed you before. If I were 13 and this had happened to me, I'd want you to be with me. Because you're the gentlest man in the world.
when you first told me I was adopted, you said how special I was. Because you and Mother chose me. I never felt special. Until now, Daddy. Jim. Lieutenant Ames is downstairs. Tom Parker, where you left him, Jim. Had a man watching your house with orders to phone in for help rather than follow you into the forest. Got there as soon as we could, but I'm afraid we were a little bit late. Yeah. Yeah, I killed him, Hank. I killed him. A man like Parker takes a lot of killing, Jim. He was a little the worse for wear when he found him, but right now he's alive and kicking. He knows he's going to have to stand trial for murder. It wasn't too hard to get a confession once we found Locke's cigarette case on him. So about all we need from you is a statement about what went on out there tonight. You should stop by the office sometime. <laughs> hey. Thanks. I know it would have been easier for you if I'd have done it your way from the start. Linda! I, I, I gotta tell my wife. Linda! Linda! Remember my mentioning the gentleman who disappeared with $50 in dimes. It saddens me to relate that he became stuck in a television booth where he eventually succumbed. Fortunately, he had deposited all his money so that the set will be on for the next 24 hours. I know he would have wanted it that way. Next week, I shall return with another story, scenes of which will be visible after the following.